Right, uh, we finished chapter eight, and now we move on to chapter nine, and uh, end with this chapter today. Okay, so chapter nine titled "Gifts of the Spirit for Ministering, Healing, and Deliverance." Okay, gifts of the Spirit for Ministering, Healing, and Deliverance. One of the uh, steps of points we looked at in previous chapters is that uh, the healing uh, power of the Holy Ghost, right? Uh, how He moves, and uh, and 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 how he, how he empowers and moves through us to minister healing and deliverance to people. Okay, so in this chapter, the gifts of the Holy uh, the, the Spirit are a sample list of the ways in which the Holy Spirit reveals his presence and power through us as individuals. It is not necessarily a complete list of ways in which the Holy Spirit works, but a representative list. The Holy Spirit is God and he can manifest himself in any way that he desires. Okay? He is God and he can manifest himself in any way that he desires. So we're not trying to put him in a box and say, okay, this is what it is. This, uh, no. Uh, you know, he can move in any way that he wants to. And, but this is just uh, a list that's presented to us from the word of God. We see in First Corinthians chapter 12 from verse 4 to 11. Uh, right, so there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences for ministries, but the same Lord. There are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For the one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healings by the same Spirit. To another, the work of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. To another, interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 31 but earnestly desire the best gifts, and yet I show you, um, you are more excellent way. 14.1. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. Verse 12 of the same chapter. Even so you, since you are zealous for spiritual gifts, let it be for the edification of the church that you seek to excel. Okay, so we pursue the spiritual gifts. We pursue the uh, gifts of the Holy Spirit for the edification of the church. Okay, that's one of those things. And secondly, we are also commanded, right? Desire spiritual gifts. Uh, you know, the Bible says we, we are encouraged and motivated, uh, you know, to go after the spiritual gifts. Okay, so uh, the gifts of the Spirit are important tools when ministering healing and deliverance. We must desire these gifts stir them up and see them in manifestation as we co-labor with the Holy Spirit to minister healing and deliverance. And we present briefly how various gifts of the Spirit would operate in the context of ministering and healing and deliverance. Uh, the comments below are not comprehensive. Yeah, the more we cooperate and work with the Holy Spirit, the more we learn about the ways in which these gifts are used. Okay. The more we the more we cooperate with him, the more we know about him, the more we learn about the, uh, the spirit of the living God. Okay. So the first one we look at is the word of knowledge. Okay. Word of knowledge. So to simply uh, paraphrase it, uh, a word of knowledge, as it says, is something that an individual will already know. Okay, for example, uh, you know, uh, I'm praying for you or I'm not necessarily praying for you. Um, let's say I get uh, your date of birth and, uh, or your phone number or your home address uh, or the color of your car, okay, for example. Okay, so these are information that you would already know, isn't it? So God would use that uh, most of the time to, to get our attention. Okay. And, and suddenly the spotlight, you we feel like the, the spotlight of heaven is shifted on, on us, on you as an individual. Okay, so, uh, and, and this has happened to me as well, right? I'm sure it's happened to you, for example, right? Um, there was a time when uh, my car needed to be repaired. 
uh, to, it needed to be fixed. It was giving me a lot of problems and troubles. And I was very disappointed. I was very discouraged. But at the same time, I was also leading worship that Sunday. <laughs> uh, and uh, Pastor Nancy was uh, leading the service. And uh, she just, you know, towards the end of the service, as she was praying, she just said, uh, does uh, anybody here have a red car? Uh, you know, and I was like, yeah, I have a red car. <laughs> uh, and so she was like, okay, don't be discouraged. Uh, you know, God is watching you. He's he got his eyes fixed on you. And at that moment, that is all I needed to know, right? I was not necessarily looking for finances and whatnot, but I was just disheartened. I was like, oh, man, my car is broken. I need that, you know, needs fixing and whatnot. But just the fact that that word of knowledge was released, it, it, it brought so much of reassurance to me. And it just made me feel that, man, okay, God knows. He sees. He is watching. He knows. And that was enough for me, right? Uh, and in all honesty, more than the solution itself, what was sufficient for me was that he knows, that he sees. And so that's the word of knowledge, okay, where God uses uh, the information or the knowledge that an individual will already know, right? Uh, you, you must have seen, right? Uh, it, does these numbers make sense to anybody? And it might be someone's date of birth. Right, or a phone number, or a home address, uh, anything, isn't it? So God would normally use one thing to lead into another. So a word of knowledge to lead into a prophetic word. Okay, so uh, we'll talk about it in, in, in just a minute. Okay, so we see that Jesus also ministered, isn't it, to uh, the women at the wells, uh, Samaritan women. It's like, he says, you are right when you say that uh, you are not married because, uh, you know, you were married, you had five husbands, and the one that you are living with now is not your husband. That's the word of knowledge, right? And then she's like, are you a prophet? You must be a prophet. Uh, and then she goes into the town and tells, you know, come and meet the man who told me everything I've ever done. And she goes and evangelizes the whole town, basically. right? So that's uh, the word of knowledge. And that's given to us by the Holy Spirit, right? the Spirit of the living God, okay? Um, so a word of knowledge can help identify some of the individual's current or past problems. It can also reveal individuals uh, or conditions that God is healing at present. Uh, this can build faith so that the person knows that God is at work, right? In word of knowledge, it builds faith, right? I remember the, uh, just, the, just like what this scripture says uh, in 1 Corinthians 14, 12, um, is for the edification of the church. Right? It edifies the individual. Okay, um, Different ways God gives words of knowledge for healing. Different ways. Okay? So God gives his revelation in different ways. And that is true of words of knowledge for healing. As well as other kinds of revelation. Some of the most common ways through which words of knowledge uh, are given include the following. Okay? Uh, through seeing, hearing and Feeling, okay, through seeing, hearing, and feeling. God reveals things to us through images and pictures um, that come out of our spirit and into our conscious mind. Uh, you know, these could be still images or motion pictures um, or, or whatever. Okay, so you, you are having this vision. You, you, are, you, are, you are seeing. Okay, so we may see images of uh, body part, parts, areas of regions of the body people with certain problems, okay? So I'm seeing, for example, you might uh, you might have a vision of an X-ray of a person's back. Uh, you know, that's something that's happened to me before is you get to see an X-ray kind of a vision or uh, image of a person's back and you might get a uh, word associated with it. Like, you know, it says hearing as well, like herniated discs, uh, you know, uh, things like that. So one is with seeing, the second is hearing, God uses the ears of our spirit and reveals his message to us, right? God uses the ears of our spirit. It's so important uh, to, uh, to note that, uh, you know, when you don't, when we don't hear something, right, what we do, our tendency is, you know, you, we tend to, for example, I can't hear you, is we tend to come closer, you know, and it's like, oh, what are you trying to say? You know, or, or if you can't hear someone, you push the phone into your ears, 
uh, and says, like, no, I can't hear you. What are you saying? Can you be a little louder? Uh, and I think that's the same method some of us or most of us tend to use or do uh, when we want to hear God. It's like, oh, what do you say? You know, we type all these faces uh, and everything, all these, you know, <laughs> uh, or is it just me? I don't know. Uh, but he speaks to the ears of our spirit because God is spirit. He speaks to our spirit. And our spirit needs to be in tune, in line with the frequency that he chooses to speak in. Isn't it? Uh, and most of the times, so often than not, uh, he would speak when I'm not so focused or trying hard to listen to him. I might be just mopping the house or vacuuming. Most of the time he, he speaks something when I'm vacuuming the house. I don't know why. That's <laughs> just my observation. Okay. And I think, okay, no, if I want God to speak to me, okay, I think I'm going to vacuum the house and my wife will be very happy with that. But, uh, but you know, he speaks to our spirit uh, just when we are calm. When, you know, so it's, our, it's up to us to, you know, uh, for us, our spirit to be in line, in tune with his. Okay. And the next thing is a feeling. God uses the spiritual sense of feeling to communicate information to us. Or God can also cause sensation you know, in, in a part of our own body that corresponds to what he is doing or wanting to do. Okay? Um, and I've seen some of the pastors in church, uh, in this example is, they would say, okay, does uh, anybody have a back problem that's like a word of knowledge linked with the feeling? And so, you know, and and I've asked this question to some of the pastors and they would say, you know, that part of their body will also start you know, pain or hurt. Say, you know, I'm feeling like there's this warmth in my ankle. Uh, is someone's ankle sore, for example, right? Uh, if there's a warmth in my, around my ankle and I think that God is healing your ankle. Uh, so you get that feeling and you kind of, okay, you know, you, uh, you quickly kind of, uh, know that this is what God's doing something at this time. Okay, so that's those are the three things, uh, seeing, hearing, and feeling that God kind of, uh, you know, uses to release uh, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, etc. Okay, so uh, God can speak to us and give us words of knowledge before we are ministering or during the ministry, during the time of ministry. Okay, please note, God can speak to us and give us words of knowledge before we are ministering or during the time of ministry. If you remember the video clip we just watched in the last class, uh, he said, as he started praying, he heard the word herniated disc. And it was, and it got, it got more specific that it is on the left lower back. Okay, so those are all the words of knowledge that uh, it keeps releasing as, you're, as we are obedient to his voice. He keeps giving information after information, like a puzzle after puzzle that you can put together. And, uh, and and minister, okay. Okay. Uh, just, just give me one second. Please. Sorry. Thank you. Um, Okay, so these are the three common ways God speaks to us, seeing, hearing, and feeling. Uh, these same means of communication are used for the exercise of other gifts of the Spirit. The same means of communication, okay? Um, there are other ways that God can, uh, God can and will speak and give words of knowledge. These include dreams, visions, or situations, or encounters with other people that may be uh, indicative of what God wants to do somewhere else and more, okay? Uh, remember we, the example of the activity that another church group does is uh, the treasure hunt. Okay, the different ways that he speaks, um, and all of that included vision, uh, hearing, and and, you know, and and seeing. Okay, um, so how to give words of knowledge? Uh, how we say uh, what we say is important. Okay, how we say what we say is important. We try to be simple, 
gentle and open about the fact that sometimes we are not sure about what we have perceived. It's okay to say that I'm not sure who this is for. If you don't know the individual, uh, uh, it's, it's fine. But we try to be simple, gentle, and open about the fact sometimes we are not sure. Okay, uh, We avoid using phrases like, thus says the Lord, or God told me. Uh, unless we feel this is essential, uh, unless you are 100% sure, to get the person's attention. In most cases, we simply say, uh, are, there, are there one or more people with such and such a condition? Is there anyone here with such and such condition? Or do you have such and such a problem in your body? Okay, is there anybody here with a lower back problem, with a left knee problem, or with a knee pain? Etc. Whatnot. Okay. Uh, we try to be clear and specific without adding to what we have seen. For example, if we have seen the lower part of the right leg highlighted in a picture we are seeing, we call out, "Are there people here with problems in the lower part of the right leg?" Okay. Ex saying exactly what you've seen, but do not add other information that was not shown, such as a broken bone, sprain, pain, etc. Only call out what was revealed, okay? Um, only call out what was revealed. On the other hand, call out as much detail as was revealed. Okay? Call out as much detail as was revealed, as this can encourage faith in the individuals um, who, may, who may have that condition. We do not get discouraged if people do not respond to a word of knowledge. Okay, so you've released a word of knowledge, you've asked the, all the right questions uh, the way that you should be asking. And uh, and if nobody puts up their hand, uh, you know, in the congregation, whatnot, it's okay, let's move on. Okay, we do not get discouraged uh, if people do not respond to a word of knowledge that is given. Sometimes people do not admit to a certain condition, either out of fear or embarrassment. Just keep pressing on in the ministry. Okay. Just keep doing what you know what we are called to do. All right. That is how some of the ways in how we can uh, how we are to release a word of knowledge. Okay. Um, let's move on. A word of wisdom. Uh, when ministering healing and deliverance, the gift of the word of wisdom can reveal the method to use to minister administer healing to the person. Okay, it's interesting, isn't it? So when ministering healing and deliverance, the gift of the word of wisdom can reveal the method to use the uh, to use to administer healing to the person or sometimes a practical solution that will unlock the person's healing. Okay, so that's, that's the word of wisdom. Um, one thing, most of this thing is, is uh, you will notice as we go through all this list, uh, list of the gifts of the spirit, uh, it most of the time one thing will lead to another. The word of knowledge will lead to uh, releasing a prophetic word, right? Uh, like I just mentioned, word of knowledge is something that an individual will already know, and a prophetic word is giving them insight, a revelation of all the things that they don't know yet. That is the basically the difference, right? So one thing, so God will most often than not will use a word of knowledge to release a prophetic word. Okay. Um, having said that. That doesn't, it's not the only way, okay? So, uh, discerning of spirits. The gift of discerning of spirits is the ability to supernaturally see either into the spirits of the people or into the spirit realm to discern the spirits of people. Okay, now the reason I've kind of highlighted discern is... Um, most of the times, it is very easy to use the word discern to judge people. Okay? Um, we would use, uh, say, you know, I have this gift of discernment and then uh, let me judge people. Uh, it's just too, we can't be wrong enough and we can't be careful enough when it comes to the gift of discernment. And uh, and I and I've learned a, a huge lesson uh, when it comes to this. It's 
it's a lesson that I will never forget in my entire life. When God teaches you something, you don't forget, right? Um, and so, so I, I have this, you know, I can discern. And when having a conversation with an individual, I can, talk, I can kind of discern in the first five minutes if I want to be friends with a person or not. Uh, and most of the times, uh, you know, I can be right. But here's what happened once, right? Um, you know, I think as a leader, you, 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 you tend to keep having that antenna up all the time. And there was this individual uh, who was uh, not behaving the way that uh, with the opposite sex. For example, uh, there's this uh, guy you know, um, in one of the uh, places of ministry, um, it, it seemed like he was too close with the opposite sex. And um, and as a leader, you you know you you want trying to protect the the you know your your sheep, isn't it? You, you want to be make you want to make sure that everybody is safe, but nothing inappropriate is happening and whatnot. And I I went to a friend of mine. I was having a conversation with him, and he said, like uh, you know. There's something not right about that person. Uh, he's way too close with the opposite sex. He's, uh, he's, his, uh, he's way too close kind of uh, with the girls, basically, you know. And, uh, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm thinking about this and I'm, I'm saying, okay, I need to go and go and speak with that individual and with the other leaders about this. And so that's when my friend tells me, um, and he didn't know that I was thinking about this. And he tells me that, you know, that guys, uh, that their sister was uh, killed recently. Uh, and so, and and he's in a place right now, and he's still not gotten over the fact that his sister was murdered. And uh, so he treats every other girl the way he would treat his sister. And that's why he's, and I did not even voice that out. And and uh, I'm sharing this, but please know that nothing about this is uh, I'm proud about. I'm, I'm embarrassed, very uh, shameful about the fact that I thought about it. And, and I'm very thankful that uh, God would teach me uh, you know, a lesson like that. And that's something that I will carry for the rest of my life is Embrace people. Uh, don't use discernment to judge people. Uh, you know, and and I think we all need uh, you know God's help to just walk uh, with integrity, isn't it? So let's be careful when we are, when we're discerning when we are moving in the gifts of the spirit, right? Especially with discernment, we discern the spirits of the people to discern the source of influence on people to see what the Lord is doing, to see what Satan is scheming and doing. Uh, the discerning of spirits is different from spiritual discernment, which is an acquired spiritual ability. Okay, so when ministering healing and deliverance through the gift of discerning of spirits, God can reveal what kind of demonic spirits are operating. Okay, when ministering healing and deliverance through the gift of discernment of spirits, God can reveal what kind of demonic spirits are operating. Okay, He can reveal that's a dumb, that's the, a mute spirit. Okay. Etc. Uh, Etc. Et okay, and the next is the gifts of healings. Uh, something that we've covered before is the gifts of healings are supernatural work of the Spirit of God, resulting in the physical or emotional healing of a sick person. Uh, for example, as soon as we call a certain condition, the person receives their healing. Okay, as soon as we call a certain condition, the person receives their healing. Uh, for example. Uh, this is the testimony of another person who said, you know, a drug addict was set free from his addiction just when the minister said, uh, you know, you are being set free from drug addiction. As that word was released, you know, the person was healed, you know, miraculously from addiction and never went back into drugs. Okay, so that's, uh, that's one of the examples, right? So sometimes a person in a crowd as a spectator who is not expecting anything to happen to them personally 
receives healing. This is again another expression of a gift of healing. Okay? And the working of miracles. Uh, the gift of the working of miracles causes things such as restoring missing body parts, restoring organs that have been removed surgically, recreating body parts, causing implants to disappear, causing function that is not explainable medically and other working, uh, workings that are not natural. Okay, uh, those are the workings of miracles. Okay. Uh, uh, have you heard testimonies of I mean, people's kneecaps being formed? That person did not have a kneecap, but you know, supernaturally a kneecap was placed, uh, was restored, uh, was brought back. Okay, um, where a person's feet, a club feet, made straight. A person, uh, you know, uh, one feet is long, where another feet is shorter, where the shorter uh, leg kind of grows uh, supernaturally. Or a person with a flat feet uh, is given curves, okay, so that they can walk properly. Um, and that's just examples, right? Um, so many stories like that of, of persons' sinus being just cleared uh, supernaturally, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? And I'm sure you've heard of so many other things that way. So those are all the working of miracles, uh, something supernatural, um, and creative miracles, as they say, okay? Um, the next is the gift of faith. The gift of faith is the supernatural impartation of faith into the heart of a believer to trust God for a miracle in a particular situation or a moment of time. Okay, supernatural impartation of faith into the heart of a believer. Uh, how many times we've seen that uh, Jesus say, you know, your faith has made you well, your faith has healed you, for example, right? So those are, that's the example there. So in ministering healing and deliverance, the gift of faith causes the infusion of supernatural faith that imparts healing deliverance in situations where we may not have the required faith ourselves. Okay. Uh, for example, in telling a person to rise up from their wheelchair and walk, we normally will not do this to every person we meet in a wheelchair. However, in a certain situation, the Holy Spirit may infuse this kind of faith in our hearts and lead us to do so. Right? The Holy Spirit, that's the key there. And he will lead you. And once again, as we always keep saying, it is our responsibility to be sensitive to his leading. If he's, le if he's not leading, if you don't hear him, don't do something that you haven't heard. Okay, if you're praying, like I said, if you're praying for someone's sight to be restored, you don't take their glasses and throw it away. <laughs> uh, right? Um, so you might have to buy them a pair of glasses. Um, okay, so be sensitive, and that's the gift of faith. Uh, prophecy. The gift of prophecy is simply God speaking to man through man. Okay, that is the gift of prophecy. God speaking to man through man. It is simply a message from God which a person receives and communicates. It is simply a message from God which a person receives and communicates. Okay, God speaking to man through man. Okay? In ministering healing and deliverance, prophecy can be used to bring encouragement, strength, or comfort that inspires faith. A prophetic word can cause the breaking of demonic strongholds, and of depression, emotional bondages, and so on. Okay? Keep in mind that the gifts of the Spirit are usually released in combination with one another. It's gift packs. Okay? Uh, right? So, like I said, the word of knowledge can lead to releasing a word, a prophetic word. Okay, or, or anything else. So while ministering, there may be more than one gift flowing together. So rather than compartmentalizing these, we just learn to flow with whatever the Holy Spirit is giving to us. We learn to flow okay, with whatever the Holy Spirit is giving to us. Okay, um, so there is this, some practical uh Pointers as mentioned uh, for us here before uh, at the end of chapter nine. Okay, um, I'll, I'll stop here.
Okay. Uh, so, uh, does anybody have any questions? Uh, do you have you were able to follow or understood? Um, and have you used any of these, uh, you know, methods before? And have you seen, uh, you know, um, God move in uh, in one of these ways that we've just learned? Hmm. Hello. Yeah, Paul. Hi. Yes, uh, I have a concern. Anyway, first of all, for me, I'm still new in ministry. Okay. I don't see those things. I don't see in the spirit, spirit of discernment, prophecy. Hmm. Yes, I'm still new. But they have also seen churches where uh, maybe a pastor has been in ministry for over hmm. 20 years, but... Now he cannot do any of the things. They don't minister healing. They don't mm -hmm. discern. They don't prophesy. Mm -hmm. So how are these gifts? How can one receive these gifts in such a situation? How can one receive these gifts in, uh, as in Paul's, uh, could you, want to, if you don't mind, reiterate it or say that again, please. How does one receive the gifts, are you saying? Like, Hey, how 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 can one receive these gifts? The gifts of discernment, the gifts of prophecy. Yeah. I was giving example that I have seen so many churches where, yeah. for example, a pastor cannot do anything. He cannot yeah. minister yeah. Uh, divine healing. He cannot prophesy. He cannot discern anything. Yeah. So it is just uh, prayer as usual, and people go. Yeah. Uh, so that's what my concern is: how can one receive this gift? And then right. in the situation where people are praying for a church where a pastor does not receive, does not have these gifts, what should happen? Should people right. go away? Should they look for another church or what? Yeah. It, uh, so it, if I want to just answer your first part uh, in terms of how do we receive, uh, like, it's the same way we've discussed in how do we receive healing, right, for example. Uh, we address this question saying, is it God's will to heal us? Absolutely yes, isn't it? Uh, we know that his desire is to heal us. That's how we receive the healing. Same way, you know, it, this, these are called as the gifts of the Holy Spirit, right? In 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It's a gift. Um, Thank like, how do you receive a gift? You know, someone someone just comes and gives, right? It's made available for us. Uh, it's already there. The blank check has been given to us, and uh, and that's why it says in First Corinthians twelve verse thirty one, uh, it says earnestly desire the best gifts, right? And then, but chapter fourteen verse one, it says pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. Okay, uh, since you are, verse, uh, verse 12 of the same chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 12 says, uh, even so you, since you are zealous for spiritual gifts. Okay, so I think that's the key there, uh, Paul, is are you hungry? Are you desperate for that? Uh, do you desire those gifts? And um, and I think that's the only thing, uh, you know, prerequisite, uh, that's the uh, you need to desire uh, for those uh, for this for the spiritual gifts and but it's already made available before that and he's he's a good father that he's willing to shower us with everything that we've got so I think in, in my opinion the, a key is to desire the church needs to desire actually the chapter 13 we will talk about um, uh, what a church should look like and I think that's going to be a wonderful uh, chapter, and it might also answer your question. But I hope I have answered. You know. Yes. Thank you, Paul. Uh, anybody else? Uh, anything else that you want to share? Yeah, has uh, you know, is anybody else motivated or encouraged by this course on healing and deliverance? Thank you. Colin, do you have a question? Yes, Pastor. Just as you're asking, that is, there, is there anybody who is motivated by this course? 
really we are motivated because we know that uh, we are in the dispensation of the Holy Spirit and uh, when we talk about divine healing and ministering it is in that very domain so anybody who thinks it's not important I think it would be on the other side of reality so I think it's very important pastor thank you so much awesome thank you for sharing the phone thank you yeah yeah thanks guys thank you for sharing um Phones, you raised your hand again. Is there something you want? Okay. All right. Great. Uh, we are uh, heading towards the end of this course, uh, probably by next week. Uh, just a heads up uh, we will not be covering chapter 10, 11, and 12 uh, from the book. That will be covered in, uh, in uh, BC 112 and uh, BC 216. And, in the course on believers' authority and uh, uh, and uh, inner wholeness. So those three chapters will be covered, but then we will uh, tip off. We we'll start from chapter thirteen from the next class. Okay, so we'll stop here. I'll stop the recording, and uh, I'll see you all next week. And thanks, guys. Thank you all for joining in. Please take care. I'm sorry about the blunder uh, that I did.